Flip buys a new motorcycle for $24,000. Um, suppose the value of his motorcycle, V, in thousands of dollars, T years after, can be represented by this equation. So obviously, right, this is an exponential equation. V is less than 1, so this is exponential decay, right? And yeah, that makes sense because the car's value is decreasing. It's not increasing. Do you see everything you've learned in the past, you just have to know equally well all of the time, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. I guess nobody wants to be here today. Okay. So, um, so complete the table. Go ahead and um, plug this into your calculator. So we have, um, I'm going to do doc B. I'm going to put in 24 times 0.98 to the power of X. Okay. How much did he buy this for? 24,000, correct? So let's fix the windows. Can everybody look up here for a minute? Oops. Let's fix the windows here. So menu, window zoom, I'm sorry, yeah, window settings. Okay, X represents the number of years after you've bought the car. So we're going to go from zero to, I don't know, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say a little bit more, maybe like 30 years. Okay, and then, um, I so we bought this for, so we're going to go zero to 24 thousand. Why don't I do 25,000 just so I have a cushion? Oh. Why doesn't it show? Oh, because it's in terms of thousands. Oh my gosh, duh. It's in terms of thousands. Sorry. Oh, I fell into my own trap here. Yeah, so 25 is good enough, okay? All right, so we plug in, we put in these values. Did anybody happen to find the values? Yeah. What's uh, one? 23.6. Yeah, 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 we're good, go. And then 16.02, good, okay? Okay, what is the limit as T approaches, uh, approaches infinity of V of T? zero okay you can't get negative dollars and then eventually the car is going to be worthless okay so now is it ever like zero dollars no somebody might buy it for like a dollar whatever who cares but it's going to approach zero right that's not even the point of a limit if it was ever equal to zero it's just that it's approaching zero but that's the thing somebody could still buy a part for a dollar right okay so the cost C of producing a certain small engine part in dollars is given by the equation this, where P is the number of parts produced. Find the cost of producing 100 parts. Okay, so this is C of 100, okay? And it's 3,000 plus blah, blah, blah. No big deal, it's 5,000. We all know how to do this. Notice the notation, right? This is C of 100. This is like an Algebra 1 question, but I'm just looking at notation. On Tuesday, the company produced 21,000 worth of parts. How many parts did they produce, right? Perfect. So 21,000 equals to 3,000 plus 20p. 18,000 equals 20p. P is 900. Okay, so 900 parts. So sometimes in calculus, even in AP calculus, you'll have some questions that are really just as basic as this, right? But it's part of like the setup to a bigger thing. Now, the average cost per part is found by dividing the cost by P. That makes sense, right? The C is the total cost. P is how many you've produced. So if it, you know, however much it costs you to make a thousand t-shirts, 
divided by a thousand, that's the cost per t-shirt. So let's find the limit as P approaches 15,000. Okay, that's kind of weird, but it's okay. We're not judging. So what's C of P? It was uh, 3,000 plus 20 P over what? Uh, P. Okay. Is this T approaches infinity? No, it's not. It's 15,000. It's a large number, but it's still not P approaches infinity. This is still a finite number. So you still treat it as if it was P approaches 2, and you just plug it in, right? Okay, so we plug this in. And we get, uh, I think it's 2,000, no, 20.20. 20. Okay, so the average cost, so this is 2020, meaning if, um, so, so the average cost per part when 15,000 parts are produced is $20.20, right? So if, all right, sorry, hang on. So if you had made only 5,000, the average cost would have obviously been more, right? So this is something that's changing by P. Okay. So lastly, let's do this. 12.3. Um, so remember 12.3, we talked about rate of change. So suppose the length x of each side of a square is changing. So like, you know, this is like expanding or, you know, contracting or whatever. Um, you want to find the average, oh. you want to find the average rate of change of the area as X changes from 5.4 to 5.6 inches. Okay, average rate of change of the area. Average rate of change, remember, was F of B minus F of A over B minus A, okay? That's average rate of change of F. So average rate of change of F of X was F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So whatever quantity it is that's changing, the average rate of change of that is that same quantity at B minus at the quantity at A over B minus A. So now if you want the average rate of change of the area, then that's going to be A of B minus A of A over B minus A, right? So this is going to be A of 5.6 minus A of 5.2 over 5.6 minus 5.2. So it's the average uh, 5.4. It's the average rate of change of the area. Now, the area is given to us as x squared. So this is going to be 5.6 squared minus 5.4 squared over 0.2. It's 11. Okay, let's talk about units. So here, the units are, you know, area minus area, it's inches squared. Here, it's the length inches, so it's per inch. So now, the area is changing by 11 square inches per inch, okay? You don't cancel that to just inches. We don't do that, right? Because one inch is a linear quantity, right? It's like a string one inch long. One square inch is, you know, 
something that's two dimensional, so you can't cancel them with each other. So this area is changing at a rate of 11 square inches per inch. Okay, so find the expression for the instantaneous rate of change of the area. The instantaneous rate of change of the area, this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0. Now the function is x squared, right? So it's going to be x plus h squared minus x squared over h. Same thing as we've been doing. So this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared over h. Again, look, x squares go away. So I have the limit as h approaches 0, factor out an h, cancel out the h's, how much is it? 2x. So this is the slope of the tangent line, it's 2x. Find the instantaneous rate of change of the area at the moment x equals 5 inches. Instantaneous rate of change, that's this. At the moment x equals 5 inches, so when x equals 5, um, the rate is 2 times 5, which is 10. So it's 10 inches squared per inch. So it's 10 square inches per inch. So the minute it's at 5 inches, it's expanding at a rate of 10 square inches per inch. Yeah. Question? Press.